There you are. In each one of these dumb human animals, there is a personality which shows itself only in play. Dumb human animals? Henry, these are not pretty guinea pigs. They are children who cannot speak. But I am convinced that in this case, the not speaking is a refusal of one part of the mind to allow the other part to express itself freely. You suggest they play out what they cannot speak out. Precisely. You are the same Henry Jekyll, forever seeking keys to the locked doors of the mind. Thank you, Dr. Jekyll. They do enjoy coming in the afternoon to your garden. They really never want to leave, especially Jane. You see, Ernst, all of my experiments are directed towards the freeing of the creature imprisoned within. In your paper, the paper that began all this trouble, you, you wrote of two creatures. In every human personality, two forces struggle for supremacy. I understand. But it was rash to publish before you could prove. Now I don't have to prove anything. Resigning my appointment freed me from idiots who are no more scientists than I am a priest. You have been missed, Henry. Yes, they must have been short of jokes since I resigned. How they laughed at my last lecture. Was that a reason to disappear from professional life? You live like a hermit in the middle of London. Is it wise? If one doesn't want to be torn limb from limb by one's colleagues, it's very wise. Is it fair? Who in the profession has been fair to me? Who, apart from yourself, has even given me a hearing? Forget the profession for a moment. What of the others? Those who care for you? Yes, I see, of course. Kitty has spoken to you. She asked you to come. Think how it is for Kitty. You live here alone, without servants, without friends. What is it like for her? What does Kitty think about this? In six years of marriage, Kitty has never thought about my work. Forget your work for a moment. Your home is in ruins. Your life is in dust sheets. I need privacy for my work. I can't think about anything else. My work is far too near completion for me to stop now. But to what end are you working, my dear Henry? Man has always known that his personality is an uneasy and unsatisfactory combination of conflicting elements. We must accept this conflict and support the good in us. Good, evil. This moral quibbling is useless. Man as he is comprises two beings. One whom I call man as he could be. In his perfection, this inner man is beyond good and evil. And the other man? He too is beyond good and evil man as he would be, free of all the restrictions society imposes upon us, subject only to his own will. A very dangerous man, my friend. For what civilizes us other than these moral restrictions of which you make so little? We are scientists, Ernst. It is for us to release and understand every force in nature. This higher man you speak of, is the weaker element in us. Our lust and our violence feed the weaker man. That is why there are so few saints and so many sinners. Will you cut evil out of man with a scalpel, Henry? How oh, you fall back into the conventional way of thinking, Ernst. I am not concerned with a moral operation, but with the control of every resource of the human personality by science. Here, Toto. Quietly now. Quietly. Quietly now. Quietly. Here we are. That's it. Quietly. Quietly. Quietly.
Even in the most primitive of men's forebears, an even more primitive, totally unrestrained energy. What is this? You have turned a placid, affectionate little animal into a, a miniature devil. Within four hours, when the drug has worn itself off, he will revert to his former placid self. Can you not take a violent creature and with some opposite drug transform it to its higher nature? I am working to that end, but first I must understand completely the enemy I have to fight against. Henry, have you experimented with this drug upon any other creature? Excuse me, Professor. Oh. Sorry to disturb you, Henry, but... I'm working, Kitty. I'm sorry, Henry, but Paul Allen is here again. Don't give in to him, Henry. He's such a useless waster. Uh, you will excuse me. I will be late for my lecture. Uh, do stay longer. It's so good to have someone who at least begins to understand. I will come again as soon as I can. Goodbye. Let me tell Alan to go. All Paul ever wants is money, my dear. Tell him I will sign his notes as usual. But, Henry, he takes advantage of you. If only you'd give a little more attention to... If only you could understand, Kitty. If only you could begin to understand. What do you think, Ernst? I am perplexed and, to be frank, a little frightened. You too. Henry is working in a very dangerous field. He locks himself in that laboratory for days and nights on end. Sometimes he looks so ill. A few weeks ago, I had to carry him to bed. He got up as soon as he could walk. You should have sent for me. Oh, he wouldn't let anyone examine him. One whole night. Oh, it was terrible. Tell me. I was so frightened. Tell me the facts. I heard him in his room. He was shouting. It was a strange, terrible sound. It... it was a fever brought on by exhaustion. But the voice, Ernst. It was a strange voice. See. Si. Kitty, my dear. There is nothing wrong with Henry that rest and yourself cannot cure. Rest, perhaps, but not me. I can't cure anything for him. You are married to a man of very great talent. Genius, perhaps. Such men are always difficult to live with. Surely you must realize Tell that... me frankly, Ernst. Could his mind be seriously disturbed? Disturbed? Seriously enough for him to be sent away. You worry excessively, my dear. Henry is obsessed. He is obsessed with his experiments. Such concentration is unwise but hardly insane. You must try to help him. We must both try to help him. Yes, we must. Goodbye, my dear. I will go this way. a grim kitty. I hate to ask him for help as much as you hate me for asking for it. At least you admit that the situation lacks dignity. What did he say? <laughs> you and Henry are such children. As long as you have your toys and he has his, you're both happy. Damn it, kitty, the hounds are at my heels. Stop enjoying yourself and tell me about it. Against my wifely advice, dear Paul, yes, Henry will save you once again. You're too good to me, kitty. I am. Far too good. I won't ever put you in this position again, believe me. I don't want you to lie for me. Of course you don't. I don't deserve you, Kitty. You don't. But I deserve you. I deserve nothing better than you. I'm sorry you won't come. How can you bear these endless dinner parties, Kitty? Oh, they can be quite gay. To listen to a lot of braying asses full of cant and hypocrisy. These are my friends, Henry. Kitty. 
Let's both take the evening off. You from being social and me from being antisocial. Let's be together tonight. Diana Ashburnham would never forgive me. It would ruin her table. Yes, of course. How stupid of me. Above all, we must not upset Lady Ashburnham's arrangements. Now, Henry, would it be fair? You should have said you wanted me to stay in this evening. I did ask you. I need you tonight, Kitty. Stay. Oh, really, Henry, it's too selfish of you to make such an issue. You may not need friends, but I do. And I'm not going to insult them for the sake of your whims. against any of your charms. <laughs> your boredom is only too clear. It's my fault. A woman who shows her feelings always loses dignity. Come, Kitty. I offer to show you the other, more amusing side of the respectable society, which bores you so much, and when I do, self. Is it so especially amusing? I feel sure that all those important gentlemen you meet at those sedate dinner parties will agree with me when I say that there is no entertainment that the Sphinx cannot provide. <laughs> You're very generous with my husband's money. <laughs> Women. Women are perfect. You are the most perfect woman of them all. From perfect wife to perfect mistress, and back again to perfect wife, and all within a few hours. Will you have the goodness to take me home? Certainly. Your home or my home? My home. <laughs> Me, my dear, our long affair is wearing a little thin. Yes, it does, doesn't it? 
Perhaps we should terminate it before it becomes completely ashes. Yes, indeed. But in that case, dearest Paul, however will you manage financially? You mustn't let that worry you, my dear. After all, Henry Jekyll has always been my friend, while you, his ever-loyal wife, have always made it quite clear to him how much you detest me. <laughs> You're the most utterly shameless man I've ever met. I do hope so, Kitty, because if you ever meet a more shameless man, I might lose you to him. That's what your kind of woman wants from a man, Kitty. Complete and utter freedom from shame. I think you'll enjoy this place, sir. It's very nearly halfway respectable. You alarm me, my friend. I'm new to your wicked city. <laughs> it's only wicked if you're poor, sir. Thank you, sir. All the very best, sir, and happy nights in London town. Another bloody idiot down the sink. <laughs> Could you fancy that? Oh, I rather think I could. Come on then, Daisy. It's far past our bedtime. Would the nice gentleman like to buy two lonely girls a drink? With great pleasure. But perhaps you'd rather dance first? You look as if you might be a pretty fair dancer. And you too. Yes, well, then. Good night, then, Daisy. See you tomorrow. Hmm. Come on, then. I love this tune. Fast little bitch. I've never seen you here before. I've never been here before. It's quite nice, really. Nicer than the Vauxhall or Willis. What the bear gardens they've become. A lady don't walk on her own. I've never been there, either. You don't get around much, do you? London and I are virgins to one another. <laughs> what have I been on now, would <laughs> I must go now. That's not very polite, is it? I said that's not the way a gentleman behaves, is it? Picking me up under false pretenses and then dropping me like an old glove. Will you let go, you fourpenny whore? What did you say? What did you call me? Go. Ah! Don't drink too much tonight, my darling. Cunning little kitty cat. Rather a dull husband than a drunken lover. Mr. Paul Allen, is it not? Not if you're one of my bloody creditors. <laughs> Mr. Allen occasionally indulges himself in these pleasantries. Please excuse him. What perfect manners. 
What an entirely perfect lady you are, Mrs. Jekyll. Don't you think, looking as she is now, that she's the most perfect parcel of ladyhood you ever set eyes on? Entirely enchanting. I'm tired of your jokes, Paul. Oh, please, don't leave, Mrs. Jekyll. Your husband is an old acquaintance of mine. I've wanted to meet you for so long. Indeed? You're very civil, Mr. Hyde. Edward Hyde. Please. I hope I don't intrude. Oh, don't worry about that, old boy. Mrs. Jekyll absolutely adores intrusions. Anything to lighten the burden, eh, hey, Kitty? Isn't that so, my dearest? My icy snow princess, my frozen honey pot. Perhaps you'd rather I left, Mrs. Jekyll? Perhaps. Don't be an ass, my dear boy. Jekyll isn't a possessive type at all. Damn good chap, Henry. Best friend I ever had. Absolutely first-rate fellow. I think it's time we left. Come along, Paul. Do forgive us. Yes, do forgive us. We've got to go home to do our duty. We always do our duty, eh, Kitty? <laughs> We're under a great obligation to Kitty. Stop it. Stop it at there once. There they go again. One last dance. Waltz for lost lovers. Then home. Perhaps you'd care to dance with me, Mr. Hyde. With great pleasure. It's about time, too, so. How well do you know my husband, Mr. Hyde? Quite well. Will you be calling on us? Indeed, I will. I have business with Henry and uh, friendship, I hope, with you. <laughs> I hope so. Mr. Hyde, I trust you. You may do so completely. Are you sure, Jenny, that that's him? He tried to force me. And when I wouldn't, he turned on me like an animal. Friends of yours, old boy? Are you going to do something to this young lady, or do I have to teach you to behave like a gentleman? Go to hell. That's right. How dare you talk to a gentleman like that, you drunken lout! Will you take me home, Paul? Women have no sense of honor. How can I leave my friend here like this? I'm giving you one more chance. Give the little lady a few sovereigns, and there'll be no more said. Good night. Gentlemen, all. I told you to go to hell and take that trollop with you. I'll teach you, Bells, how he leave his little friend to look after him. For God's sake, man, don't kill him. You ill, old boy? Let me alone, Jekyll. Let me alone. Jekyll. I must get back. I must get back. Leave me. Leave me. Damn you, Jekyll!
promised you work so late, my dear. Not that you missed anything very brilliant tonight. Oh, Lord, those formal dinners. You really should have come, Henry. It's too unfair to expect me to carry the whole burden. If one lives in society, one simply has to respect social conventions. I'm exhausted. Not that it's of the least interest to you, I suppose. <laughs> you live in a world far too remote for these mundane matters. For heaven's sake, Henry, say something. I need you, Kitty. I need you desperately. Henry, I'm tired. Please. What are you really like, Kitty? I'm your wife, that's all I am. But the woman inside you. Is that woman my wife? Isn't it a little late for these obscure discussions? Will we ever know who we really are? Who are you, Kitty? Who are you? Your hand's bleeding. My hand. But who am I? 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 <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea what a pleasure it is to be in your company again. You should have been here last night. Wonderful fun. Still, I'm glad you like the old place. Admirable. Rather like Fortnum and Mason. I don't see the similarity. You can buy anything here. Oh! <laughs> Tigers needn't lick their lips over her unless they're very rich. Is she so exclusive? Only princes, pashas, millionaires, or distinguished actor managers need apply.
get it, dear boy. She's not in the prep school class. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> The unattainable Eve with her apples and snakes. It's pleasant to see you again, Mr. Allen. You have a new admirer, my dear, Mr. Edward Hyde. Enchanted. My sincere compliments. You are most kind, Mr. Hyde. Such natural manners. She only uses Christian names in bed. Well, ladies, it seems that I must entertain you both. I trust that you will not be too disappointed. Oh, we just have to manage somehow or other. Thank you for your confidence. You've come to the wrong room, Mr. Hyde. I don't entertain here. I see that your partner guards you constantly. Keep away from him. He is dangerous. Good night, Apis, my sweet. Your friend talked to me like a common whore. In all fairness, he never implied that you were common. Just how much money did you have in mind, Mr. Hyde? I would not insult so beautiful a woman by offering her anything so trivial. So, thank you for your politeness, but good night. Don't mention it. I have to dress. Don't let me prevent you. But I have an appointment. I'm afraid you'll be late. What could possibly detain me? I intend to. You are too impertinent, Mr. Hyde. Yes, that is so. <laughs> you have an amusing approach. Merely direct. You are very confident, aren't you? Could a man without confidence approach you? The men who beg get nothing. I do not beg. If a man buys, he pays much for very little. I am not buying. You do not buy, you do not beg. Is there anywhere a man who simply takes? I am that man. I thought you were. What is it? You are going? Yes. I must. Will I see you again? Perhaps. What does perhaps mean? Edward, why perhaps? How do I know? But you know what you feel. We English never know what we feel, my dear. But you will come again soon. I don't know. Say you will. I told you, I don't know. Of course, you have a nice cold wife to go back to. What an amusing idea. A nice cold wife. Good morning. I have an appointment with Dr. Jekyll. He's away. Or well, perhaps I could speak to Mrs. Jekyll. Bit early to call on a lady, isn't it? Says he has an appointment with the doctor. 
ask Mr. Hyde to come up. He already has. Mr. Hyde. What a pity my husband is away on business. What a pity. That will be all, Nanny. Forgive me for receiving you in here. Lately, this house has become unused to visitors. Please, don't mention it. Being the wife of a recluse is not an easy role. You've heard of my husband's strange way of life? Yes, I'm afraid it's common talk. Perhaps I can help you with your business. Business can wait. Since our chance meeting, I wanted so much to see you again. Mr. Hyde, I hope that because of the circumstances of our first meeting, you won't come to any wrong conclusions. It's because of them that I've been trying to put you out of my mind. You see, I have no wish to uh, trespass on Paul's... Uh, Paul's what? Paul's friendship, I was about to say. <laughs> Question of trespass hardly arises. Mr. Allen has no property rights in me. And uh, Henry? Henry leads his own life. He doesn't seek my approval. And I don't seek his. Is that wrong? We who seek no one's approval are not concerned with right or wrong. What are we concerned with? The pursuit of pleasure, the fulfillment of desire, exciting alternatives. <laughs> alternatives to what? To the boredom of being a neglected wife and the humiliation of being a rejected mistress. You overestimate my freedom from convention, Mr. Hyde. Forgive me. I was forgetting that even the most honest of women need to be courted with the most dishonest of phrases. <laughs> I must say you are honest. A trifle obvious, perhaps, but honest. Listen to me, Kitty. Why should we pretend? From the moment I felt you in my arms as we were dancing, <laughs> our future has been clear to both of us. Oh, sir, you take far too much for granted. <laughs> great affairs always begin without discussion. My great affair has already begun. It was well advanced before ever you appeared on the scene. I wonder what is the special quality in a man as weak, unscrupulous, and utterly unreliable as Paul Allen? I don't question your description, Mr. Hyde. Well, then, why? I nearly happen to love him. Love? Love is an idiocy. <laughs> an idiocy of mine, perhaps, but a fact. I love Paul Allen. my own observations, Ernst? I'm afraid I do. There appears to be an accelerating of your entire metabolism, as if your life were suddenly burning itself up at a much faster rate. No, I will not be your bank clerk any longer, Paul. Kitty, darling, why not let Henry take care of life's little problems and leave us its gaiety? No, I'm sick and tired of being you. How can you talk about love in this way? You hypocrite! These are debts of honor. I can't go bad on them. Honor? <laughs> what a typical gentleman you are, Paul. I hope so. All your honor staked on a card, so you've none left for any man or woman. I see. Paul? Paul? So that is your diagnosis, Ernst. You think me a simple-minded opium eater. You underestimate me, my friend. 
I can diagnose opium addiction. But your addiction, I suspect, is something less familiar and more damaging. Thank you, Ernst. Ah, Mr. Allen, perhaps you can persuade our old friend to lead a more sensible life. Goodbye, Henry. It's hardly my speciality, but I'll try. Well, my dear Henry, what are you doing here? Search for the elixir of life? I leave the life search to you and your friends. What do you want? Well, merely to thank you, my dear Henry, for your extraordinary generosity. Thank you for your gratitude. And now I must get back to my work. I, I wondered, Henry, if, uh, if you could manage. My experiments are very costly, Paul. I'm afraid I've rather overreached myself, with your help, of course. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry indeed. Don't bother to call again for a while, Paul. I shall be going away. Oh, you're going far. I wonder. Well, I suppose you lied your way successfully out of debt again? Unfortunately, no. I must be losing my grip. You refuse to help? But what will you do? It's good to see the Jekylls reunited at last. But what will you do, Paul? Please, don't disturb yourself on my account. You won't do anything desperate. Apart from continuing to live, nothing. I have determined to discover all that Hyde can reveal. My bank and my solicitors are instructed to regard him as my attorney in my absence, my heir and executor if I fail to return. For do I want to return to a life of frustrated isolation and loveless misery? so. Always have the best possible luck with bitches. Almost always, anyway. <laughs> well, I'm Bill. Hello, Jack. Goodbye. My dear Edward, just the one man I was hoping to run into. Will you have a drink? Thank you. Wait, I'll bring another glass, will you? Business problems? You know my weakness? Women. Gambling, my dear boy. Women aren't a weakness, they're a recurrent necessity. But I thought that one of these necessities of yours was in the delightful habit of honoring your debts for you. You can't trust anybody these days. Oldest friend lets me down, oldest mistress lets me down. No one to turn to. What are you in for? About 2,000. Sell your soul. Gladly. No takers. I'll take it over. My soul? Now, that would be about as useless to me as it is to you. I meant the debt. Well, that's, that's extremely kind of you, Edward, but I couldn't possibly permit it. I'll stake you to 5,000. Are you quite sure this is convenient, Edward? I mean, it's really very, very kind of you, and I'm deeply obliged. Just pass the notes over to me as they come in. Don't you think it would be better, perhaps, if you were to give me the five now and then leave me to... No, I'm afraid that's the only way. Of course, if you'd rather not leave yourself in my hands... Well, I'm only too happy to be in such extremely generous hands. It's very kind of you. There are other ways you can repay me. London is your oyster, my dear boy. And I'm the one who can open it for you. 
open it wide, break the hinges, rifle its pearls. <laughs> Nothing but promissory notes, useless bits of paper, and now you want to give us more. Have you ever known me to Welsh on a debt of honour? No. Nope. It's a bit thick, you know. Night after night. Look here, Everton, if you're trying to insult me... Oh, it... don't be an ass, Alan. We'll take your notes. We'll take anybody's notes. <sighs> My dear fellow, what else is there? Is London only good for a week's entertainment? Think of something else. I have. And we've done it. And incidentally, I've, I've done the five, too. So soon. My dear Paul, that is one talent you really do have. You can spend money faster than any other man in London. Well, do you think that perhaps... Continually. That you are a fool. Well, I suppose I could try Kitty again. Try me instead, my friend. What a really good chap you are, Edward. And I'll try, Kitty. What the devil do you mean, Hyde? Well, that should be simple enough even for you to understand. I'm telling you to obtain your mistress for me. You unspeakable devil. <laughs> How very amusing. Paul Allen, breaker of every law in the moral code, is shocked into morality. You, you vile, disgusting. Disgusting, degenerate. Be rational, my friend. I'm asking for the temporary loan of a proven adulteress, of whom you yourself have grown somewhat tired. You go back to hell! You, Nanny. Mr. Hyde, I hardly expected to see you again. Do you make a practice of breaking into other people's houses? Your husband, unlike yourself, trusts me with all that he owns. You've seen him? 
Yes. I will not ask you under what circumstances you saw him. But I'd be delighted to give you a full account of all Henry's doings since he deserted you. I prefer not to know. But should you see him again, perhaps you'd have the goodness to give him this. With pleasure. Now, suppose I see Mr. Allen. Is that another note for him? I prefer to give Mr. Allen my messages personally. Good night, Mr. Hyde. Please have the goodness to leave. I have Paul Allen here. In my pocket. <laughs> what do you mean? Allow me to present your lover. A handful of bad debts. Perhaps you would care to buy him back? Come, Mrs. Jekyll. Why not sell what you have so often given away? <laughs> I might agree to your preposterous suggestion, Mr. Hyde, were it not for the fact that you utterly repel me. Price of a quart and a gin, Gov. Just a quart, Gov. Go on, Gov, will you? Will you, Gov? Just a quart. Oh, oh, oh. Myself and uh, my sisters here and my little niece Mary to be drinking with such distinguished gentlemen. It is. Good luck. Drink up, Mary, dear. I am very sensible of the honors that you are doing me, sir, and ladies. And you, my little novice. Yeah. Such a lovely young man, Mary. I think it's love at first sight, Mary. What about you coming along with me and Miss Sister, dear? You are, don't you, sir? Go on, you enjoy yourself. It's a hard life being a mother. Yeah. Why does love make us behave so hatefully to one another? Because we're cowards, my darling. We want everything. Let's go away, Paul. Let's start a new life together. We will, my love. We will. <laughs> He's about ripe. <laughs> Bring him out just after I go out. Right? <laughs> Well, what about it, dear? <laughs> Come on, you unwise virgins. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you'll get your rent tonight. I'll save Mrs. Blair. I said you'll get your money tonight. It's never let you down yet. Mind you, I think she charges through the nose. Same as the she grave, did. Mrs. Blair. Mm -hmm. Nice timing, my loves. She's 
very religious, isn't she, Mrs. Bly? Yes, she has her own man. Pity, really. I rather fancied him. What are you worried about? You got your money without working tonight. Here. One for you. One for you. Oh, yeah, one for you. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Generacy is low enough to satisfy him. I have locked the door. Dr. Jekyll. Come on, come on. yourself get into the hands of such a man. You and Henry left me no alternative. Paul, we should have had the courage to go away together years ago. Darling, Kitty, be realistic. Could you ever have lived on my gambling losses? I'm so sorry to intrude. What the devil are you doing here? I have a message from your husband, Mrs. Jekyll. He has decided to forsake a situation which is too difficult for him to contend with and has asked us for a final reckoning tonight at the Sphinx. He does so want our last evening together to be gay. Until tonight, then, Mrs. Jekyll? Paul? I wonder what he's up to. I don't want to go, Paul. I'm frightened. Listen, Kitty, this could be the solution to all our problems. If Henry's decided to get out, then he's bound to make a decent settlement. But if you'd left him... What a fool I am! an idiotic fool. 
As soon as I get this tedious business over, I shall join you there. Don't keep me waiting too long. I had no idea that Henry was familiar with this place. It seems to me that we never knew Henry quite as well as we thought. Where is Mr. Hyde? All is prepared in the room of the Signora. Indeed. I, uh, I think I'd better go and see what this fellow's up to. You wait here. Don't be long, darling. Champagne for Madame. Dear Paul, how very considerate of you to be on time. But where is your enchanting mistress? We can't possibly have our party without her. Surely we can leave Kitty out of this? Hardly. She's going to wait downstairs until this damn business is over. Now, where's Henry? Naturally, you're impatient to see your old friend. Let's get on with it, Hyde. By all means. He would like to speak to you first, privately. What the devil is all this? He has certain arrangements providing for your future which he'd like to complete with you. Don't hesitate, Paul. This meeting could finally solve all your problems. Let's get it over with, then. No one in here, Hyde? Look more carefully, my friend. But don't be ridiculous, Hyde. There's no one in here. Paul? Paul? Where is 
Henry. Believe me, your husband is here. Find your way home at last, my dear. And the bed you deserve. You like me in this? I like you in this place. I love you in any place. The pattern of justice is complete. Whose room is this? Mine. At last. love you don't know me and yet you love me i don't care about knowing you animal you don't care whether i'm good or evil all the men who bought me they knew about good and evil so we dispense with the unnecessary good evil and love no not love I can't love. I know nothing about love. That's sad for you. And maybe for me. But I still love you. Good night. 
night, my love. Good night. Sleep well. Sleep well. I want to be free. Everything I do is directed toward that end. It isn't true. You murdered that girl. You murdered her. You revenged yourself on Paul Allen. You revenged yourself. And Kitty. Poor Kitty. What will become of her? All in order to free me. None of them were in your way. But you are in my way. Unfortunately, my dear Jekyll, I can't destroy you without destroying myself. And so you destroyed those others instead. But through their deaths, I will become free of you. Society will blame you, it will hunt you, and force you to remain hidden as I have had to hide. You hate me. I have no feelings toward you whatsoever. I do only what is logically necessary. Come now, Jekyll. Admit you're defeated. End this struggle which you must lose. Never. You must lose, Jekyll. You must. Is it wise to be here? In a few hours, they'll be searching for you. You must lose, Jekyll. You must lose. What have I done? What have I done? The arrangements were made by Dr. Jekyll? For him, by his friend, Mr. Hyde. They were to dine together last night with the ladies. Mr. Hyde is a good friend of the Signora Maria. What else do you know of this Mr. Hyde? A very free-spending gentleman. Uh, as apart from his virtues as a client. He always seemed a perfect gentleman. That's all I know, Inspector. And Dr. Jekyll? I can't say, Inspector. I never met the gentleman. All right, you can go. Inspector. Yeah? The management would be prepared, I feel sure. 
to make certain arrangements with you. If? I'm sorry. It's not possible this time. But there's always a next time. I suppose uh, Dr. Jekyll could have arrived and left by the back door. With this Mr. Hyde. And the woman Maria. Well, we'll soon find out. I'll keep this place closed. Now, after this, what we need is a visit to the doctor. Go on, Rogers. So, my dear Ernst, you are the only one I can look to. You can perhaps help to save something of the life and honor of your truly repentant friend, Henry Jekyll. Yes, quite all right. There's a hamper over there. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to take it into the mews for me. Certainly, sir. Can you manage alone? It's a bit heavy, sir, but I think I can manage it. Good. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> he set fire to the place. <laughs> he shot himself. He tried. Don't say anything more just now. It would seem, from the evidence of Professor Litauer, that the balance of Dr. Jekyll's mind was disturbed by dangerous experimentation and addiction to drugs. In his deluded state, he executed a diabolical revenge for imagined wrongs, and at the last took his own life. Mr. Hyde is fortunate indeed to have escaped from this holocaust. The case of Dr. Jekyll is a solemn warning to us not to meddle with the divine pattern of nature. Death by suicide. Thank you, gentlemen. The proceedings are closed. A fine man. A fine mind. But he failed to realize that the higher man is free of all restraints. The higher man? He lives solely by energy and reason. He takes what he wants. There is no Jekyll in him. For one moment, you sounded like poor Jekyll. He also. Mr. Hyde, are you unwell? I must leave immediately. Are you sure you feel able? Goodbye, then. Your voice. Leave me now. Leave me. As you wish. Henry Jekyll, it's my duty to arrest you on a charge of willful murder.